Congresswoman. We will now move to the Q&A portion of our town hall. As mentioned earlier, constituents signed on via the Zoom platform may use a Q&A feature to submit your questions. Please mention which neighborhood you are from as we prioritize questions from constituents. Also a reminder to members of the press that after the Q&A, there will be a press gaggle where you will be able to pose questions. Our first question is from Gabrielle Gadula from Astoria. With the infrastructure bill recently passing, I'd love for Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez to address how specifically it will impact the people of New York 14. As we all know, improved transportation infrastructure is sorely needed in Queens, especially with our busing system, as we have a lack of subway lines serving Queens neighborhoods. Great. Well, uh, that's an excellent question, and I want to thank you for it. Again, as I mentioned, that you know, it was my assessment that many of the investments in the bipartisan infrastructure bill were not particularly structured for equity. And as I mentioned, out of for, out of a hypothetical one hundred dollars uh, allocated for transit or allocated for transportation infrastructure. 80 of those dollars go to roads and bridges, and 20 of those dollars go to, go to public transit and rail combined. So that means those are funds allocated for MTA plus Amtrak plus, you know, Metro North and, you know, your six train, your seven train, et cetera. So we're not getting a ton in the bipartisan infrastructure bill uh, to work with, but we are getting significant chunks. Uh, and so, as I mentioned, um, as I mentioned, Governor Hochul had announced that uh, it was her assessment that we would not need any fare increases, uh, thanks in part to some of the investments in the bipartisan infrastructure bill, but the funding inequities are still baked into the passage of that bill that we're going to have to address. I have brought this up to uh, President Biden's administration. I have flagged this uh, and, and in started this conversation with Secretary Buttigieg as well in saying, okay, listen, we have the investments. We have some of these investments in public transit. That's great, but we have to actually ensure that they're equitably allocated because how many of us have seen how beautiful and shiny and climate protected uh, the subway systems are in affluent downtown Manhattan, but then also how underinvested they are in the Bronx and in some areas of Queens. And so we need to make sure that if we're investing in public transit, we're not just doing it at the tourist stops. And we're not just doing it in, in shoring up and glitzing up and protecting the Manhattan uh, and more affluent subway stations, but that we're actually investing in the stations and areas that need the most. As you mentioned, busways are very, very important to this as well. Um, so we're going to need the Build Back Better Act uh, in order to really maximize the equity and investments on true public transit, because rail, you know, high-speed rail and Amtrak and all of these things are areas that I champion, but they are not substitutes. They are part of our system, but they are not substitutes for the subway system. And so the having the Build Back Better investment and this vote tonight and securing it and making sure that, you know, if I had to do hard, difficult things in order to accelerate the vote to tonight, I was willing to do that because this is the investments that you're asking about are really uh, championed here in the Build Back Better Act. Um, so the bill, the infrastructure bill is also expected to provide some nominal funding to a really important, uh, a really important priority on the Bronx half of the district, which is capping the South Bronx. And so the bipartisan infrastructure bill, it's got some funds for it, but we really need to maximize uh, our, our, our funding of it to actually get it done. Because like I said, if you fund half a bridge, you can't just build half a bridge. You're just not really going to get the bridge. And so we need to fully fund capping the South Bronx uh, because you can't just have the thing go off into an abyss <laughs> or, you know, 
just have it be plans that get drafted and never realized. So additionally, we're also hopeful that some of this funding will go to extending the second half new subway line, a uh, new rail tunnel connecting New York and New Jersey, improving handicap, improving uh, disabled accessibility to our subway system. I don't need to tell you all how horrendous <laughs> accessibility is on the New York City uh, you know, subway system. We don't, there's so many countless uh, uh, stations that don't have wheelchair access, elevators, ramps. Anyone who's tried to take a stroller around also knows how difficult this is. And so I'm sincerely hoping that a lot of those investments go to improving accessibility uh, to our stations. Um, we also want to replace older school buses and electrify, further electrify some of the New York City fleet uh, and also improve drainage uh, in parts of our city. And that is so incredibly key and critical because as we saw with Hurricane Ida in places like East Elmhurst and Woodside, the flooding wasn't just because it rained a lot. The flooding was because the drainage, our drainage systems failed and backed up. And because the drainage system stopped, that's what really created a lot of the catastrophic flooding that we saw. And so in terms of infrastructure investment, we really want to see that uh, the Build Back Better funds and you know, any other sort of infrastructure funds go to really helping uh, drainage systems. And not even just in our community, but sewers and drainage systems is kind of this mounting national infrastructure crisis issue. Um, and the key is that we need to fully fund it. And so I think it's wonderful that some money was thrown to it, but this is also one of those problems that are, is just simply not going to be fixed if we half fund it. And so we need to fully fund it. Um, but next question. <clears throat> 